I'm Robin Murdoch, live outside the Michigan Assembly Plant, the Ford Michigan Assembly Plant here in Wayne, where workers have been walking the picket line for four days straight now. What President Joe Biden is planning to do to try and end the strike? The answer, that's straight ahead. Good morning, Amy. Robin, good morning to you. A frightening scene over the weekend near Eastern Market. Part of the building comes tumbling down, sending one person to the hospital. What we're learning about what went wrong and how that injured person is doing now. Morning, Brandon. Amy, good morning. Uh, like mother and father, like child. Uh, that may be the case when it comes to alcohol. What experts say can influence a young person's drinking decisions. That is coming up. Working for you. Fox 2 News Live at 11 starts now. Well, hey, good morning. Thank you for joining us on this Monday. I am Brandon Hudson. And I'm Amy Andrews. UAW workers back on the picket line as the union resumes talks with the big three. Yeah, we are four days into the strike. Workers walked off away from three plants. Automakers announced some temporary layoffs. And now the White House is sending help to smooth things out between the two sides. Fox News' Robert Murdoch joins us live in Wayne with the latest. Robin, good morning. Good morning, Brandon and Amy. Yeah, that help is expected to arrive in Detroit any day now. I can tell you that we have been outside the Ford Michigan Assembly Plant here in Wayne, just trying to keep an eye on how the strike is going now that it is in its fourth day. It's been pretty quiet out here, except for a couple of times when there were some traffic tie-ups. In fact, the last time was probably about a half hour ago. That is when police actually were called in to help some my trucks cross the picket line. Police on Monday joined striking workers outside this Ford plant on Michigan Avenue in Wayne. They weren't walking the line with them, rather trying to break up the line a bit so that vehicles blocked by their picket could get in and out of the facility. These six hour shifts, hopefully shifting the course of contract talks going forward. These men and women worked through three years of COVID. Some of them lost their lives in a job. My wife's a 40-year UAW member, went to work every single day. Monday marked day four of the historic strike at three different locations in the U.S. This Ford plant in Michigan, the Stellantis site in Toledo, Ohio, and the General Motors facility in Wensville, Missouri. It's the first time in UAW history that workers have gone on strike against the big three at the exact same time. The fight you are waging here is not just about decent wages and working conditions and pensions in the automobile industry. It is a fight to take on corporate greed. Senator Bernie Sanders among those who spoke out on behalf of the picketing workers at this rally in downtown Detroit on Friday night. A number of politicians have also walked beside them over the last few days and we are now learning President Joe Biden will send the White House advisor and acting labor secretary to Detroit to aid in the negotiations. No one wins. The employee doesn't win. The community suffer. You know, at General Motors, for every one job we have, it supports six other jobs in the economy. So no one wins when we're on a strike. Right now, the strike involves about 13,000 workers at those three specific sites. But the president of the UAW says it could expand at a moment's notice that other facilities are prepared to stand up and strike when called upon. We're told the White House team is expected to arrive in Detroit to lend their support any time now. It's a good first step, but we need either the president or President Obama walking the lines. I think we've got to get our, uh, our top leaders out here. Now, that congressman that you just heard from traveled all the way from the Silicon Valley, all the way from California, just to walk alongside these striking workers earlier this morning. Now, I did talk uh, to some workers this morning. They tell me that they are willing to strike as long as possible until they get a fair deal. For now, we are live in Wayne. I'm Robin Murdoch for Fox 2 News. Well, Robin, uh, we're still early on in the strike, so to speak, but we know that talks uh, leading up to this point have gotten and somewhat contentious. So why are the acting labor secretary and White House advisor being picked to talk to, try to smooth things over here? 
Well, Brandon, as you guys know, uh, these contract talks have been ongoing since mid-July. And from what I understand, that White House advisor, as well as that acting labor secretary, they have been in contact with all of the sides involved in these talks for some time now. They've kind of been acting as the point people for the White House. So they have been talking on the phone with them for weeks and weeks. And soon, that talk will become in person. It'll be face-to-face. -face. Back to you. Look forward to that moment. Robin, we do appreciate your report. Thank you so much, and have a good day. Amy. Well, the two sides in the UAW contract battle still far apart. Whatever happens, it's sure to have a long-term impact. Much of America is now paying attention, and one local expert telling us Wall Street is, too. The attractiveness to investors, I mean, you have to look at it from that comparative point of view because investors can put their money anywhere uh, and not just in the auto industry. They can put it in other industries as well. Uh, so they're going to be looking for those options and deciding what to invest in. And these companies have got to do better in being more efficient and making certain that they produce products that are profitable and that resonate with customers. And this is just an intensively, relentlessly competitive business. The last UAW strike targeted GM, lasting 40 days and costing $3.6 billion. Meanwhile, the union that represents auto workers in Canada is preparing to go on strike against Ford tonight if no deal is reached. Unifor's contract expires at 11.59 tonight with all three of the big three automakers. The union has chosen Ford as its target, concentrating on its negotiations with the company. Once Unifor reaches a deal with Ford, either with or without a strike, it will work to get GM and Stellantis to accept the Ford deal as a pattern for those contracts. The last strike against Ford in Canada was all the way back in 1990. Well, new this morning, a house goes up in flames on Detroit's west side. Sky Fox over the scene earlier today on Tuller near I-96. Video shows flames coming from that roof of the home. Fox 2 crews on the ground report the fire burned for several hours. Officials say crews had to leave from inside because of a possible roof collapse. Neighbors tell us the home was vacant. Well, just check this out here. One driver forces another off the road during a hit and run in Lake Orion. And here's another look at that surveillance video. Police need your help looking for the driver that caused this. It happened just after midnight yesterday. Police say a four door sedan ran another vehicle off the road on South Broadway Street. The victim's car crashed into a sign. Fortunately, that driver was not hurt. If you have any information, call Lake Orion Police. Well, take a look at this. A terrible crash sends four people to the hospital on Detroit's west side, including a Michigan State trooper. The chaos unfolding early yesterday morning on the Southfield Freeway near Finkel. The driver of the SUV crashing into an MSP patrol car and another vehicle that was part of a traffic stop. The force of the impact sending the SUV airborne. Investigators believe either drugs or alcohol were a factor. The driver was described as belligerent and uncooperative at the scene. This morning, charges are pending. And wow, watch this. Meanwhile, in Warren, a police officer was involved in a crash Saturday afternoon in the area of 11 Mile and Hoover. Fortunately, despite the violence in this crash right here, that officer has since been released from the hospital. No one else was hurt. The investigation ongoing at this hour. A scary moment near Eastern Market over the weekend as part of a building collapses. You saw the hole there. You see the damage to those cars. The big question is what went wrong? Fox News' Camila Miri has a closer look. The building just collapsed on an Eastern Market. Eastern Market in Detroit, Saturday morning, a little after 11.30. And it happened out of the blue. It was like it, everybody was just fine and boom. It happened right across the street from Shed 2 at a time when the market was crowded with people. Just, all you just see is a, a boom and the building fell. Um, it was smoke everywhere. Everybody just started scattering towards it, actually. I'm just like, why everybody running towards it? You don't know what it could be. Detroit Fire Chief James Harris tells Fox 2 the initial call came out as a partial building collapse and a possible explosion. We arrived and we surveyed and we got our drone out 
and we went inside the building with our drone to make sure nobody was in there, nobody was entrapped. While no one was trapped inside. Uh, one person was transported to the hospital for minor injuries. That was a pedestrian, and they were on the left side of the building. The giant hole in the four-story building attracting a lot of attention throughout the day as people speculate what could have caused the building to partially collapse. While the official cause is under investigation, a city official tells Fox 2 an emergency demolition for the building will be issued. That was Camille Miri reporting. We do have some good news. That pedestrian who was hit by the debris and went to the hospital is expected to make a full recovery.